Welcome to Reality is Undefeated. I'm Matt Gatewood. Thank you for tuning in. We do not own anything. I had a moment of clarity the other day that hit me like a freight train. Sat me down for days, as you guys can see. For years, I felt like my people just lack leadership. Like if we could just get these few things down, we would be good, right? I guess I had to see these two things consecutively in order for it to make sense because now I get it. Now I get it. So I was transferred to a different project by my employer the other day. My last day at the MSG Sphere was Monday. On Tuesday, I was in orientation at this new project. Took my break around 10 o'clock and I used the time to go and respond to some of the comments left under the videos. I read a comment from one of my more regular contributors whose comments I love to read because he leaves no room for misunderstanding. Plus he challenges me like no one else as far as my mental, right? And the gist of what he's saying is, you get on YouTube every day and talk about all of these issues that are plaguing our community and how we're struggling in America. Not only will these issues never go away, but they will continue to get worse. You have an option, get your family out of there, take that option. So while I'm internalizing this, I go back into orientation and we have to watch this video on the Moapa Paiute Native American tribe because this project that we're building is partially on their land. And this video is given their history, how they were given 2 million acres of land in 1873. Then two years later, the government took that back and left them with a thousand acres of land. And it's showing their communities, their neighborhoods and how they clean it to take pride in it. Then it goes on to show their constitution. The preamble read, we, the members of the Moapa Band of Paiute Indians, in order to establish a legal organization, promote the general welfare, conserve and develop our land, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the power to exercise certain rights of home rule, not inconsistent with federal, state, and local laws, do ordain and establish this constitution for the Moapa Band of Paiute Indians of the Moapa River Reservation in the state of Nevada, to conserve and develop our land. That's when it hit me. Uppercut to the chin, but instead of lights out, the lights came on. Looking at those pictures of their neighborhoods, most of us wouldn't even want to live there. They didn't have the lush landscapes. They didn't even have sidewalks. They didn't have, you know, multi-level homes with three car garages and 12 foot ceilings. They had four walls and a roof, as basic as a home gets, but it was theirs on their land. If you take the average income earning black family in our possessions and place us next to the average income earning native family in their possessions, it'll look like we have so much more, but we have so much less. They have freedom, something that we think is attainable in this country if we chase and collect enough coins. They have inherent rights that'll never be available to us. They can let their children play outside and not worry about anything but nature bothering them. They live by their laws, customs, and values. They police themselves. They grow and farm a majority of their own food. They have their spirituality and religious beliefs intact. They have everything money can't buy. I've sat on this camera every day, naively preaching to you how we can improve our community if we just did this and that or applied ourselves here and there, or stop doing this and that. And it all sounds great in theory, but none of it's possible in America because you can't build anything in mid air. You have to have a solid foundation and we can't place our foundation on land that does not belong to us. I've walked around for so many years with this false belief that since our ancestors farmed this land, built its economy, fought for our freedoms, and our elders continued that fight, that it must mean this land also belongs to me. It's false. The belief that I have a duty to continue that fight on this land is false. If Martin knew that 60 years later, we'd still be getting choked out, falsely imprisoned, shot down in the streets, and chewed up by dogs, he would have abandoned that march on Washington and marched to the piers, to the docks, to the airports, and said, get the hell out of here. This is why Marcus Garvey wanted to create a nation in Africa specifically for the diaspora, so that we would have a homeland to claim. 
He knew the importance of that and he died over 80 years ago. This is why Malcolm wanted the government to give us land the same way they did the natives. He recognized that as being the first piece of the puzzle for us to do everything he felt we could do. He knew we had enough, we just needed the land. Because without sovereignty, we can't establish anything of our own. We can't educate our children in mass, practice our beliefs, or instill our values, traditions, or customs. Every time our children step outside our doors, our work at home gets undone because they walk out into the world that does not belong to them, that's full of different beliefs and customs. This is why our women are competing for everything except us. While they see value in that education, that career, that handbag, but not in building a family. This is why our young men don't see value in each other's lives. Why they fight each other instead of for each other. Why that chain, that car, those shoes, that neighborhood means more to them than the fact that your kids need a father. We do not own anything. No matter how many titles, deeds, or bank accounts you have with your name on them, if you are an American descendant of Africa, commonly referred to as a black person, living in America, you do not own anything. At best, you are renting because you're living on a land that is governed by laws that did not have you in mind and still do not apply to you to this day. You were never considered. We are homeless. We have been cursed to be the only people on this earth in mass to not have a place to call home. I mean, sure, you can go back and do an ancestry report and find out your family's place of origin, but do you truly recognize that place as home? How far back do you have to go with your ancestors before you're able to identify someone who stepped foot on that land? And if you were to step foot on that land, would you feel at home? For most of us, the answer to that last question is no. We'd be unfamiliar with the land, the animals, the vegetation, the language, the values, the customs, the beliefs, the traditions, the way of life. This is the reason people from all over the world are able to come here and prosper, because they have a complete identity. When they set up shop in the U.S., they don't take on our culture. They extend theirs. The little Mexicos, the Chinatowns, the little Ethiopia, as we have here in Vegas, become satellite camps for their culture, their people. They're able to set up their stores, their restaurants, their few blocks of their way of life and sustain their community. All of a sudden, the end of belly just makes so much sense to me now. Like, I got to go watch that movie again. I feel like sin right now. Feel like I just left the barber shop and got hit with a slug that got the words, no, aunt, this is reality, engraved on it. Like I'm about to go home and, and tell T, you know, we got to go. It's time to go. Let's go to Africa. We all need to get out of here, bro. Because even if we built private communities, which had been my dream for years, a police vehicle could still roll through any time of the night and turn our worlds upside down. Freedom doesn't come through a dollar. It comes through the mind. And it's followed by taking the action that your mind says is necessary to take. This is why the Lakota Sioux have continuously turned down that money for the Mount Rushmore land. Even with the interest accrued, they recognize that that money makes them a slave to it. That land keeps them free. This is why Josephine Wright at 93 years old is fighting like hell to keep her property. Online savant, you are correct. My understanding of human psychology was not fleshed out enough to refute your point of how our history still affects us today, which was accurate to the T, might I add. I should have thought deeper. To all my people, please accept my sincerest apologies. I now know what many of you have been trying to teach me. I will grow from this and be better with how I choose to teach on this platform.